So the question I want to answer today that I haven't really answered on the channel at all is how accurate are my IGCSE predictions? Now, from the comments section, I've seen that many of you have found these videos very, very useful after the last two or three years. But I really want to get into the detail today and look at one of my prediction videos from May 2022 and see exactly how accurate that is. And please do check out until the end of the video. I'm going to give you a final percentage of how accurate accurate they were for IGCSE 0580, paper two and paper four. Right, so let's go to my laptop and let's get started. Right, so let's go through the paper two variant one here. So you see I've got my spreadsheet set up here of all the topics I called certain, the topics I called almost certain, and then the sometimes topics there as well. I'm gonna make a different column here for variant one, variant two, and variant three. And we'll go through each of these papers in turn and let's just see how good the predictions were. So as we go through the paper, you can see I've got the paper here, two, one. And as we go through, we've got some number skills to start with, which is very typical on paper two. And as I go through, well, product of prime factors here, that doesn't actually come up my predictions, so I can't pop that in. And the first thing that does here is that typical fractions non-calculator paper. So let's put a cross in there. Now we've got some substitution and some rearranging formulae, which go into my sometimes category. So I'm gonna put a cross in there. Now we've got some factorizing, which goes in here, expanding and factorizing. And so I'm gonna go through this paper. I'm gonna give you my comments as we go through. Then we have uh, sequences here, which actually doesn't come into my predictions here. So again, I'm gonna move that on here. We've got a volume and similarity question, which falls into this category here. So we put across. Notice with a paper two specifically, you're gonna get these topics coming up more than once, which I do mention in the video. If you haven't checked that out, do check it above. Then we've got an angles in polygons question. So an angles calculation question. So we're gonna pop that in here. Standard form, which doesn't make my list. So we're gonna move on. We have a speed distance time question. So I'm gonna pop that into here for variant one. And then we've got some indices, which again, I put it in my certain category for a very good reason. Transformations, which is usually my paper four, came up on paper two. Uh, we have here a radius of a hemisphere volume. So another volume question, we've already ticked that. Uh, we have circle theorems, which does come into my sometimes category. So let's pop that in with a cross. And our next paper here is a similarity question here with angles. So this could also go into angle calculations. We have a speed time graph. Again, that goes in the speed distance time. We have a factorizing completely. I've already popped that in. Uh, for a factorizing question. Indices again. We have um, a quadratic question with some equation solving. So I'm gonna pop that into equation solving, like so. We have another length of diagonal cuboid, that's 3D Pythagoras. So I'm gonna pop that into here. And then we've got a proportionality question that comes into my sometimes category. So I'm gonna pop that down here. And our next one here is vectors, which creeps into our almost certain category. So let's pop in that across there. And our last question here is a quadratic simultaneous equation question. Again, comes into the equation solving idea. So that's our first paper here, variant one. If we scroll down, notice our certain here was at 86%, 40%, 30%, and our total percentage was 50% for that particular variant, which is pretty good going considering how varied a paper two can be. Okay, and now let's look at variant two for the paper two. So let's scroll our way through. Got some negative numbers. Aha, we have a stats question here. So working at angle for a pie chart. So let's pop that in the stats category. Perfect. Got some general number skills here. We actually have CERT, which is interesting because it comes up a lot on 0607. Again, you can use your calculator for this. We have total surface area, so that's gonna feature in our area volume 2D, 3D shapes. Uh, we've got a probability question here, so that goes in our sometimes category, so let's pop that in. We have uh, percentage calculations, so we're gonna pop that in. Um, in our certain category. We have sequences again, didn't put sequences here in paper two, always oh, did. And I did also in a variant one, so I forgot about that one. And oh, the standard form also popped up, so I'll pop that in from the variant one video. We have bearings here, 
Again, that generally comes up on paper four, so that's not in my list here. We have a vectors question, but I'm gonna pop that in here. Perfect. And we've got some indices, so that came up also on variant one. Pop that in. Uh, what do we have here? Distance time, so speed distance time question, so let's pop that in. Um, we've got a fraction question, again, as you can see, very, very popular. Again, when I go through this analysis, it's going to feed into my prediction for next time. We have a percentage calculation question again there. Highest common factor, uh, which is not in our list here. Venn diagrams, which again, didn't pop up on our variant one, but has in variant two. So that's perfect. Let's pop that in. And also some probability. So that's already been mentioned here. Then we've got some trick equations. Yep, that is definitely in our sometimes category here. So let's pop that in. We have proportionality again, so let's pop that in. Again, you can see the themes with the questions that we are seeing here. And a function question, which is interesting, because again, mostly a paper four topic. We have some expanding and factorizing, factorizing in particular here. So I'm gonna pop that in. And then we've got another sequence question. I did go through that in one of my recent videos. And let's have a look. See, see sequence is already there. We've got a vectors question already seen as well. Again, another volume question, so volume 2D, 3D shapes. And that's it for that particular paper. So let's scroll down and pop this in. So we've got a little bit of a list percentage on this one, 59% in total. I've modified the previous one because we missed a few topics, uh, but 71% in the certain category. So not as good as variant one, but still not too bad. Okay, and our last variant here, so variant three. So let's go through. Here we've got a probability question straight from the off here. So I'm gonna pop that in for probability. Super, we've got an angle calculations question. Okay, so that's come out of two out of three variants. That's pretty good. Uh, we've got a stem and leaf diagram, so that comes into our statistics section. So we're gonna pop that in here. We've got a sequences question. So that's appeared on all three papers. That's interesting to note for my future predictions. We've got some indices work here, so we're gonna pop that in with our cross there. We have a scattergram question, a scattergraph question, which comes in statistics, which we've already seen. The typical fraction question here, non-calculator, so we pop that in. We've got some speed time conversions, so we can pop that in. So appeared in all three, which is interesting to note. We've got a Venn diagram question, so we can pop that in here. And what we've got next, circle theorem question. That's a nice question there. So we'll pop that in. We have a HEF LCM style question, which is not on our list. We have factorizing, so expanding factorizing. So that's appeared on all three papers. We have sequences again. Again, we've already seen a sequence question. Inequalities, which is, again, one I put in the sometimes category, hasn't appeared in the other two papers. We've got a speed time question. We've already mentioned speed distance time. We've got a congruency question. So that doesn't really come into any of our categories here. A bearing question, again, haven't mentioned that in my predictions. Functions, again, generally a paper four question. So that's interesting to note. We've got a typical area, volume 2D, 3D shapes. So that can be popped in. And we've got upper and lower bounds, which again, has only appeared on one of the three papers, but again, has appeared. And then we've got another expanding factorizing question there as well. Okay, and the last one here is a trig equation question. So again, trig equations we can pop in and proportionality. So variation proportion. So a lot of those sometimes topics coming up on this particular paper. And oh, we've got indices, but we've already included indices there. So if we scroll down, let's see how we got on here. So similar to the paper two in terms of the certain topics, but our very best average here on total percentage that appeared at a whopping 68%. So with that particular variant, I've predicted more than two thirds of the paper, which is pretty good going. Okay, now on to paper four. So again, this is actually easier to go through in some ways because the questions are much longer and extended on this particular paper over two hours and 30 minutes. Let's start with variant one and go from there. So our very first question is a big stats question. So let's pop that in here as the first question on here. 
Again, it's a typical big stats question at the start of the paper. Then we've got some number skills here, including some percentage calculations here. So that's going to go into here. And anything else in that particular question? Not really. Question three, we've got some typical um, equation solving here. So we can pop this into the equation solving. Do we have any other skills here? Uh, we've got some indices, but that's not quite there. Um, do we actually have any equation uh, expanding and factorizing? We don't specifically, so I don't think I can put that in. Again, big function question, which is very typical, but doesn't always appear, so you have to keep that in mind. Again, can appear on the paper too. Um, we've got some angle calculations and some area, so that's going to be popped into this section here. And, yep, yeah, it continues there. Then we've got, what do we have here? Ah, the working with graphs here so let's have a look here don't think it's in my particular list so it does come up quite often so that's interesting i've got some differentiation at the end there so just notice that so let's pop that in here yeah and we are working with quadratics but i don't think it's enough to put it in okay we've got sine cosine rule bearings very classical question on paper four, so we pop that in two, shortest distance. We've got some Venn diagrams and probability. It's interesting, I focus more on paper two for that, um, but it's not in my list here. So that's interesting to note. Um, this is quadratics in context, so that goes in here. Oh, probability and Venn diagrams is there. There we are, pop that in two. Make sure I pop everything in. Um, yet more quadratics um, in context, and that's the end of the paper. So 100% on almost certain. Okay, my formula's not quite working there, but it should be 100%. There we are. And overall 69%, which is pretty good for the paper four. Okay, and time to go through variant two on paper four. So let's scroll through. So we've got some number skills here. Uh, we've actually got some ratio questions, so we can pop that in. Uh, problem solving as well, but again, typical number questions and standard form, density, etc. Aha, here is our big circle theorem question, which didn't appear on the other variant, so let's pop that in. And then we've got some coordinate geometry, which is one of my predictions, paper two, but it came up on paper four instead. Um, what do we have here? So we've got some angle calculations here, which is probably going to involve sine and cosine rule, so I can pop that in as appearing. Let's have a look through. It's a line of symmetry. And here's a big transformation question, which, again, very standard. Didn't appear on variant one, which is a slight surprise, but has appeared on variant two. Then we have a look through here. Uh, we've got some probability and we've got some percentages as well. So uh, percentage calculations and probability. So we can pop those in. So far, the certain category is not doing too well. Um, we've got some upper and lower bounds, not in my list here. Here's the big stats question, again, histograms in this case, so we can pop that in, again, very typical on paper four. And then we've got some algebra skills here, so we've got some equation solving, for sure. We've got some, ex have we got any expanding and factorizing specifically? Uh, yes, we do at the bottom, so we can pop that in. Actually, we can pop them both in here in the sometimes category, combined together. Um, then we've got some similarity and area. So we can pop that in. Again, not a big topic. It hasn't appeared a huge amount, but still counts. Some interesting, some inequalities, linear programming. Again, I've got a video above if you want to check that out. And here comes the sort of big volume question. So we've already ticked that as well. And then we've got some differentiation here at the end with stationary points. So only came up slightly on variant one, but it's come up here big on variant two. And that is the last question. We've done really well on this one. Just functions really missing out and quadratic specifically. But yeah, whopping 85% for variant two on paper four. Looking good. Okay, and the last paper four here. So paper four, three. So let's scroll through. So we've got some kind of speed distance time ideas here. We've got some ratio problem solving, which I identified as a topic appearing more. So we can pop that in here. Uh, we've got some speed distance time, but not in my predictions. The big transformation question. So it's appeared on two out of three papers. So that's good to see. We're seeing that pattern there forming. 
Um, we've got some percentage calculations, also some more ratio put in there as well. But certainly percentage calculations, so we can put that in. And yeah, using actually exponential formula, which is interesting, a slightly different style of question. So we've got a polygon question. Um, we can probably put that into the, yeah, the area, 2D, 3D shapes, yeah, particularly how the question is developing there. It's again, very typical on paper four. Here comes that big stats question. So we strike lucky on all variant one, two, three for this particular style of question, cumulative frequency this time. And now we've got this big um, algebra question, which is coming up more and more often. We've got some expanding, we've got some solving. So both of those are ticked off on our list. Well done. And then we've got the classic sine, cosine, rule bearings question. So that's appeared on all three. Really going to feed into my analysis for the upcoming exams in 2023. And we've got coordinate geometry, which didn't make my list for paper four. But again, something to be aware of. And then we've got a quadratic simultaneous equation, which I've already put into equation solving. Um, got some sketching there of expanding brackets. Is it going to go into differentiation? Yes, it is. So we get this big, huge seven mark differentiation question. So that can be popped in too. Um, I guess quadratic simultaneous equations will actually come into quadratics as well. So I think I can justify putting a cross in there. And then we've got a 3D Pythagoras and trig question. Um, again, I don't think that goes in separately. And that is the end of the paper. So if we have a look, we've then gained similar to what we did in the variant one paper at 69%. Right, now we've gone through all the papers. I'm going to go back and tell you the overall average for all the paper twos and all the paper fours. Okay, so I've taken the average of all the different um, paper two and paper four and all the variants that go with it. And I've come to the big figure, which has been what we've been waiting for, of 70%. So if I take everything that I've looked at, certain, almost certain sometimes, and look at the general percentage overall for what it appeared, it gets 70%. Now, do you think that's a good percentage? Do you think it can be improved? Or do you think I can improve my predictions in some way? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any more thoughts on that, again, let me know as well. And if you really need to get yourself up to speed, on all things IGCSE, then do check out the video, not over there, but right over here, because that's going to help you supercharge your revision.